For most of human history, finding yourself the subject of new rulers has been something to be endured and survived rather than something celebrated. Cardano and all of crypto will soon find themselves in this position. While our fate isn't exactly on par with medieval serfs, it's safe to say that the new order will involve some taming of crypto, some curtailment of the seemingly unrestricted freedoms we now enjoy, an end to the Wild West era of crypto. But it's not all doom and gloom. Newly leaked documents give us a distinct glimmer of hope that our new rulers will be the ones we want and that Cardano has once again set itself up perfectly for success. Ready? Let's go. Today, we are going to discuss the Digital Commodities Consumer Protection Act, a copy of which was leaked today. If this particular piece of legislation were to pass at some point in the future, it would have wide-reaching implications for crypto. It would probably put us in the right regulator's camp in a lot of cases, but not in all cases. And it would have some pretty big implications for a lot of different players across crypto. If you looked at this image and said to yourself, bro, those look like aliens in a weird car. Did this just become an alien podcast? Because if this is an alien podcast, I'm going to listen way more often. No, those aliens represent our new rulers, our new overlords rolling into town. Or if you're finding value in these videos each weekday, please consider delegating to the Army of Spies stake pool, ticker AOS. Lexpunk Army has had a busy couple of days. Here's Gabriel Shapiro again. He says, I have long been a believer in transparency and open discussion of the future of crypto law. Accordingly, I have obtained a copy of a draft of the notorious DCCPA circulating secretly in DC and am hereby making it available to the public. So what is the DCCPA? It is this, the Digital Commodities Consumer Protection Act of 2022. This is an amendment to the Commodity Exchange Act that we discussed yesterday. So the important, the important thing here is that this is called the Digital Commodities Consumer Protection Act, not the Digital Securities Consumer Protection Act. That that little choice alone tells you that this is going in the right direction. It's going toward the CFTC and away from the SEC. And in fact, up here at the top, we can see to amend the Commodity Exchange Act to provide the Commodities Futures Trading Commission jurisdiction to oversee the spot digital commodity market and for other purposes. We like that so far. Definitely anything going in the direction of the CFTC is probably a better step than the alternative for crypto. That leak of this recent draft of the DCCPA came out just today, and this analysis is already out. So this poster is not a lawyer, and he does make, I think, one mistake as he sort of goes through this, but I think it's a useful rundown of what's in this draft nonetheless. And we'll, we'll talk about the one thing that may, may or may not be a mistake, but we'll, we'll look at that too. So he starts off, we'll skip to the important stuff. In, in this draft, there's a definition given for digital commodity. And the definition looks like this. The term digital commodity means a fungible digital form of personal property that can be possessed and transferred person to person through the use of a distributed ledger technology or a similar means. This is a pretty good definition. We've definitely seen vastly worse definitions come, come out of you know these types of you know, legislative attempts. The important thing though here is that it says a fungible digital form of personal property. So for it to be a digital com commodity, it has to be fungible. I really like that. I think for the same reason that this poster does. He says, fungible, hmm, what about NFTs? Some NFTs are security securities, but if an NFT is not a security, that means it's not a commodity either. No SEC or, or CFTC. Personal property, a digital property versus security you own. I, I agree with him. That's fantastic. If the CFTC takes over a big bulk of the crypto world and they say, hey, it's only in our court, 
if it's fungible. And then the SEC says, hey, some NFTs are securities. We saw that yesterday from Hester Peirce. Some NFTs are probably securities if they fit the criteria that we talked about yesterday, but a lot of t- NFTs won't be securities. That means, according to this, maybe they're not in the CFTC's court or the NFT's court or the uh, SEC's court. That sounds fantastic. Next, he looks at this section that says the term digital commodity includes property commonly known as cryptocurrency. And notice this change. They're moving away from the or virtual currency language and just saying known as cryptocurrency, such as Bitcoin and Ether. And it as a Cardano person, it definitely makes me cringe a little bit to see them just singling out Bitcoin and Ether, probably not good for Cardano. But at the same time, I also agree with some of this analysis. He, he says, I guess this means the CFTC just clarified that Bitcoin and Ether are commodities, not securities. Kind of looks that way. And then he points out what uh, qualities he can identify that those two cryptocurrencies share. They've both reached sufficient or full decentralization. Okay, yeah. Uh, No governance model. Yep, that seems to be the case. Not a whole lot of on-chain governance going on in Bitcoin or in Ethereum. Fungible currency property with no financial promises. Okay, yeah. Has a primary non-financial utility. Okay, you. I mean that you could argue, you could argue that, but you could say that um, maybe you could say that about Bitcoin and Ethereum. But I think the interesting thing is that it looks like they're being singled out among all of the cryptocurrencies. I mean, they're the largest two, so maybe that makes sense. So down here, they get to a definition of commodity brokers. Um, I agree with him. The big positive thing here is that this does not include transaction validators nor developers. So we wouldn't have stake pools and miners or people just writing code being deemed commodity brokers. This is one of the problems we ran into with previous legislation on crypto. He also points out this section on digital commodity custodians. The term digital commodity custodian means a person that as an identifiable business maintains possession, custody, or control over digital commodities on behalf of another person. So the poster here, he, you know, Riley says, it's obvious Coinbase, FTX, and other centralized exchanges might be affected by this because they're obviously maintaining possession and custody of digital commodities on behalf of a whole bunch of other people. Non obvious, he says, what about custodial wallets and apps that manage users' private keys? They'll need to register with the CFTC as well. He's asking the question. What I think is probably more impactful is the question. Are Ethereum stake pools going to have to register with the CFTC? Because those are definitely custodial stake pools. They're definitely taking custody of their delegators' funds. So would this mean that all Ethereum stake pools would have to register with the CFTC? This is not a problem in Cardano because we have this self-custodied staking the stake pools do not become custodians of your delegation if this were to pass as law the way it is and i I haven't read through the entire thing and obviously it's just a draft things could change a million things could be inserted but if this section were standalone and nothing else impacted it and this passed as is i would be pretty concerned about this if i were were an ethereum stake pool operator because all of a sudden you would have to register with the cftc and maybe that won't be a gigantic burden maybe they'll be willing to do that but it's definitely a very big change that would that would affect stake pools like the ones at ethereum that have custody of the delegation and wouldn't affect cardano Next up, we have a couple of related definitions that could have some pretty wide reaching implications for DeFi. So this is a definition of a digital commodity broker, and it talks about anyone soliciting or accepting orders on behalf of another person for a digital commodity trade, accepting digital commodities from another person for the purpose of entering into digital commodity trades and arranging the execution of digital commodity trades on behalf of another person or similar activity as determined by the commission. Of course, they have this little catch-all to give themselves the power to declare any 
other activity that looks similar at all in their opinion to also be the activities of a digital commodity broker. So he points out, uh, you know, the positives and the negatives here. The positive is that it doesn't include transaction validators nor developers like the a lot of the other definitions. They're kind of carving out some space for stake pools and miners and also code writers. But the problem is, what does this mean for DAOs that are running platforms? Because a lot of these platforms are definitely accepting crypto from another person for the person purpose of entering into trades or arranging the execution of trades on behalf of another person or soliciting or accepting orders on behalf of another person for a digital commodity trade. So this could pull in all of the DAOs running DeFi platforms and they would have to register with the CFTC, presumably as digital commodity brokers. So we've also got this definition down here of digital commodity dealers. This one presents another, another concern. So this one has the same exclusion, the same exculpatory language for validators and software developers. But it also has a piece that talks about making a market in a digital commodity. And this is the definition for digital commodity dealers, right? Sounds very similar to digital commodity brokers because we're used to talking about broker dealers in the securities context. But in this context, they're slightly different. And dealers includes anyone making a market in a digital commodity. And this poster wisely points out, hey, what about LPs? What about liquidity providers in liquidity pools? Are they going to be deemed to be market makers who are falling under this definition of digital commodity dealers? Because I can guarantee you people are not going to want to register as digital commodity dealers just to LP in a liquidity pool in some decks. Next, he goes through a series of definitions like digital commodity trade, digital commodity trading facility, digital commodity platforms. And as you would guess, given what we've already seen, they all have implications for DeFi. He's more focused on centralized finance implications, but he keeps pointing out uh, also makes me wonder about DeFi. And as I read through them, very much make me wonder about DeFi. We'll come back to that a little bit later. He also points out the CFTC, or he keeps saying the CFTC wants but I think really uh, what's, what's going on here is that this, uh, this amendment to the Commodity Exchange Act is, is, is uh, dictating that the CFTC would get these things. And of course, you know, the CFTC is being consulted on, on all this. So, you know, you could say indirectly, this is the CFTC saying they want these things, but it's also obviously you know, uh, members of Congress who are are pushing this forward. So he says, the according to this, the CFTC would get exclusive jurisdiction over digital commodity only trades. Of course, the SEC could also regulate trades that involve securities, but the CFTC wants exclusive jurisdiction over the trades that under this act would be commodity only trades. And interestingly, the CFTC mentions it has nothing to do with the use of digital commodities for commerce, uh, merchant or consumer payments for goods or services. This is great if you are trying to pursue some kind of some kind of payments use case. So, and that's this language right here. Nothing in this act applies to, and the commission not, shall not have jurisdiction over any digital commodity transaction by a merchant or consumer that uses a digital commodity solely for the purchase or sale of a good or service. Okay, the kind of language you would expect. And then we get down here to actual requirements for things like digital commodity platforms. They would have to register with the CFTC, have a chief compliance officer, compliance systems, uh, so they can actually follow the rules. They have to monitor trades, provide info to the CFTC and the public, suspend users who violate the rules, have fraud and risk management systems, and more. And you can imagine that would probably end up, you know, involving a lot of KYC AML type stuff as well. Uh, he says one requirement is that digital commodity platforms must be able to discipline, suspend, and expel users who violate rules, including delegation to third parties. Not clear how this would work in DeFi, where decentralized protocols wouldn't have these means. So yes, it's a big problem for DeFi. If DeFi platforms are declared to be digital commodity platforms, very difficult for them to be able to suspend users who violate rules because they don't even know who the users are. 
So he says one one requirement is that digital commodity platforms would need to custody digital c- commodities in an insured depository institution. So I'm not sure if his analysis is correct here, at least based on what language he's citing. So he's saying digital commodity platforms would need to custody digital commodities in an insured depository institution. I'm not sure if that's what the language he's citing actually says here. It actually says a digital commodity platform holding customer property shall deposit all customer property other than digital commodities at an insured depository institution. So they're not saying they have to custody digital commodities at insured depository institution. They're saying they'd have to custody everything but the digital commodities at an insured depository institution. He goes through some other very impactful sections here, like this one, the commission may disapprove a listing rule or rule amendment described in paragraph one. The commission determines that the listing rule or rule amendment is inconsistent with this act, not in the public interest or the information provided by the digital commodity platform is materially in- incomplete. So if this is listings, then this is a pretty serious change. He, of course, is focused on centralized exchanges, but it, this is a pretty big change. If the CFTC can disapprove a listing on an exchange, whether we're talking about centralized or decentralized exchanges, that's a huge change. We're getting away from permissionlessness there. He says, before new digital commodities are listed on digital commodity platforms, the CFTC will check with the SEC to see if it's a security. This is kind of bad news because the SEC, of course, they seem to think that everything is a security, at least under Gary Gensler presently. Gary Gensler definitely seems to think a lot more things are securities than we would like him to. So if the CFTC is going to check with the SEC every time to see if something's a security. I think the SEC is going to come up on the security side a lot more than we would like. Um, Of course, platforms that deal with commodities and securities, we need to register with the CFTC and the SEC. What is this going to lead to? This is going to lead to a lot of platforms only wanting to fall into the CFTC. And so only registering or only uh, dealing with things that they know are commodities and avoiding anything that could be a security because they're going to want to avoid dealing with the SEC. Of course, gigantic platforms, we're talking about a Coinbase or an FTX, of course, they might just decide to do both and register with both. But I can imagine a lot of entities are only going to be want to be over here in the CFTC camp. So if we come down here, he has a section down at the bottom where he sort of talks about what he thinks the upshot of all these things will be. And I think I I agree with a big part of this. He says, all these laws will apply to centralized finance, but also any centralized app interface into a DeFi protocol that performs digital commodity trades and is thus a digital commodity platform. I bet the SEC and CFTC are taking similar approaches to this. Yeah, probably. Digital commodity and security platforms will need to be compliant and regulated, leading to centralization and industry consolidation at the interface app layer. Pessimistically, this leads to regulated DeFi via CeFi, and optimistically, the optimistic silver lining case is for DeFi protocols to be adopted by centralized finance. Of course, he admits he's a centralized finance guy. I believe his profile says he was the ex-head of crypto at City Ventures. So, you know, he's, he's, uh, you know, thinking about centralized finance. He says a few things more interesting innovation outside the U S for non U S users, Coinbase, FTX, and CFI like apps with scale DeFi protocol and infrastructure only plays things outside DeFi like NFTs, non DeFi infrastructure and commodities. So this could be pretty, a pretty big change for all of crypto and all of DeFi. What we know for sure is that it looks like the CFTC and the SEC are going to chop up the crypto world and probably everybody's going to be scrambling to be in the commodities world. But this adds a lot of meat to that commodities world. It looks like it won't just be a case like these, all of these uh, assets are going to be declared commodities. So go ahead and do what you will. Just don't violate any of the normal commodities rules. It looks like that's not going to be the case. It looks like 
a lot of these different types of players, even if even if an asset has been declared a commodity, a lot of these different types of players would have to still uh, register with the CFTC. And the problem, the second you get into registering with a federal regulator, the problem you run into is that that's going to be a lot easier for the traditional central finance players to sort of spin up this registered regulated entity that does the same thing that more crypto native entities have done in the past. So I think we would see if this were to become law, we would see kind of a shift, a shift toward, you know, centralized finance players, like traditional finance players, sort of putting on the hat of some use case that previously looked a lot more like DeFi. That's not necessarily a positive development, but then again, this is one of these situations where now we're going to see the rise of new overlords, and that's going to be accompanied by some loss of certain freedoms we had in the past. I think the real silver lining, no matter what regulation comes out of Washington, no matter how they chop up the crypto world, no matter what becomes a commodity, no matter what becomes a security, no matter what each of those regulators decides to do to the assets in their world, it doesn't change the fact that Satoshi opened up Pandora's box. And once crypto became a thing, once enough of us in the world realized what crypto could be, there was no way to put that idea back in the box. There was no way to evacuate those ideas from so many brains. Crypto is unkillable at this point. And even if they regulate us, we've gotten too big. We're too widespread. Too many people have vested financial interests in crypto. We have too many lobbyists now. We have too many lawyers working on things like this. Crypto is unkillable. I hope you're having a great week and I'll talk to you tomorrow.